Hello friends. Yes, today I will be talking to you about your favorite gadget, the smartphone and everything that the smartphone offers you. But of course, in the limited time of about 20 minutes. Most of our times today are spent on social media, Snapchat, WhatsApp, Insta and most of our friends are there. Today, millennials, whom most of you are, are said to have spent at least one third of their waking hours on WhatsApp, Insta, Snapchat, TikTok, whatever. This was a study made by Vivo, a smartphone company, and they said that this accounts to nearly 1,800 hours a year. Of course, that is quite far-fledged, but it is something to reckon with. The report also said that 75% of the respondents agreed to have owned a smartphone right from their teen years and 41% were hooked to their phones even before graduating from college. So addiction to smartphone is the new addiction, it's the addiction of the day. If your parents uh, will talk to you about addictions, they would have an idea of addictions to uh, of people in their uh, village or in their town being addicted to drugs or to gambling or to alcohol. But today, when we speak of internet addiction or smartphone addiction, it has the same understanding of what an addiction is. The same things which happen to a human brain and a human system happen to the person who would have been addicted to alcohol or to smartphone, uh, to, sorry, to alcohol or to drugs, a person who would have been addicted to uh, gambling, to drugs or to alcohol in the earlier years today could also be addicted to smartphone. What I am trying to say is whatever happens in the brain of the person who is addicted to drugs or alcohol or gambling. The same thing could be happening in the brain of a person being addicted to the smartphone. Yes, so that is why internet addiction or smartphone addiction is something to reckon with. Internet and the smartphone being used for uh, entertainment in your free time or when you don't have assignments to do or when you when you want to just relax is good but when you are watching uh, your smartphone and doing things uh, with the smartphone on in your uh, in a hiding place when you're hiding and doing it then it is something which you have to think about seriously you have to think about what is happening to you that you have to do that you have to watch the smartphone in hiding. What is it that you are hiding from? What is it that you want others not to see you doing on your smartphone? Studies have indicated that some patterns of the internet use are associated with loneliness, shyness, anxiety, depression and self-consciousness. Do any of these sound familiar to you? Are you lonely? Are you shy? Are you often anxious? Get irritated uh, 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 very often? Are you expecting things instantly from persons, from your parents, from your siblings? Do you get depressed? Are you self-conscious of how you look? Are you constantly taking selfies? Another study has indicated that higher the tendency of one being addicted to the internet, the less faith the person has. What is the connection between faith and your addiction to the smartphone? A person who has faith is in a way addicted to God. For example, not that she or he is saying our fathers and Hail Marys constantly, but there is always a constant link in between the person and some and something beyond which is God. The person is constantly uh, talking in some form to, to God, uh, discussing things, what's going to happen, oh Lord, help me, oh Lord, what, what am I going to do now, uh, Mary, my mother, help me. 
and there is some kind of a connection always uh, with uh, with the, when a person is uh, has faith in god uh, in in short we would say that a person is dependent on god for most things when a person is addicted to the smartphone he or she is dependent on what is in the internet for getting pacified for getting comforted a person addicted to god would allow herself or himself to be comforted by god but a person addicted to the smartphone would look for avenues within the smartphone to find comfort to find solace and to find happiness that is what the difference is from in being addicted to god in a way and addicted to the smartphone today you are going to cross check where do you stand just as the internet offers us many possibilities of connecting to others paradoxically what it does is it makes us socially disconnected can you see the image on the wall yes what this image is showing is what happens to most of us that is we are friends but with our smartphones in our hand we are both socially disconnected if those smartphones were not in the hands of those two boys they would be talking to other, each other uh, laughing with each other they would be sharing jokes thinking about memories but because the smartphone is there they are together physically but not psychologically they are two distant worlds psychologically that is what is happening to us and uh, the previous generations are seeing this constantly in the present generations and that is what is worrying them my dear friends if your parents are worried that you are always on the smartphone it is because they find that you are not mixing enough with human persons because of your smartphone you have probably become a, a couch potato as what they call or you are not playing football enough or you are not going with your girlfriends enough because you are on only on your smartphone and that is what they are worried about for many of today's social media inhabitants uh, they may have hundreds of friends on snapchat they have many followers on instagram and twitter and whatsapp but do they have enough of friends true friends let me tell you the story of jane jane was so popular because her friends said they liked to see the photos she took and every day she would keep taking photographs and uploading on her insta and a snapchat and there would be a thousand uh, not a thousand but many many likes and comments and etc so jane began to depend on the likes in order to feel happy if she didn't get enough likes naturally she was sad she was dependent on what others felt of her photography she was not confident enough of what talent god had given her and what she was doing why am i telling you this is because what happened to her while taking photographs one day when jane was taking photographs she was on the road side and a beautiful flower was on the side of the road and as she was clicking that flower she had to take a particular angle and she turned in such a way that she did not see a vehicle coming in front and yes the vehicle rammed onto her and she collapsed after that she didn't know where she was until one morning she opened her eyes and all she could see was a white ceiling and with some tubes popping out of her nose and her hands were tight and her brain felt fuzzy what where was she what was happening and she realized that she was in a hospital and she then she remembered she was taking a photograph and then she kind of rang the bell which was there and the nurse came and she 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 kind of tried to uh, ask what is happening and uh, the nurse said that oh we are so happy that you are back to consciousness and she said oh yes i was taking the photograph uh, yeah i had to take that photograph that day and this thing happened but anyway i'm sure my friends are waiting to see that photograph i'm sure my friends are waiting for me 
is anyone outside and and the nurse said yes uh, there is there is somebody outside i'll just call them and jane was waiting for those uh, friends who seemed to be giving her likes uh, on her uh, snapchat and as the door opened and people began to come into her uh, room the only three people who came to see her were her mother her father and her brother where were all those friends who kept giving her likes where were they were they real friends were they real relationships or were they just like friends jane realized that day what life was all about she put her feet on the ground and she realized that what mattered most was those who lived and loved her for who she was her life was important to her mother her father and her brother and they were there when they when she needed them most and those liking and thumbs up friends were not real friends you and i my friends have to come to that realization sooner or later we spend lots of time chatting and putting thumbs up on our friends snapchat but we do not have enough time to spend with our mommy or our daddy or our brother or our sister to see what is happening in their lives to see why they are so sad why they are not talking why they feel so tired why is my sister not uh, happy today realize it today your family is important but it's not it's not it's not late even if you are addicted to your smartphone uh, pay attention to what your addiction is today my friends the youtube uh, there is a chance of the youtube inviting you inviting rather praying you making you pray on prey on things like pornography pornography is a very big business and it is a big business because it touches the core of our being our sexuality don't get addicted to pornography and even if you are addicted to pornography you it's time you get out of it you can get out of it if you are not yet addicted to pornography thank god the grace of the lord is with you but if you are still addicted to your smartphone there are possibilities of of de addiction do not worry you look at these possibilities of de addiction and you will find that one day you will be free of them let me tell you some of them the best way to start off with a de addiction plan is tell somebody tell somebody who you know will stay with you and help you to the end it could be uh, a teacher in your school whom you trust who has time to listen to you it could be uh, a priest in your parish who uh, listens to your confession and who is genuinely interested genuinely interested in in your conversion it could be a sister in a convent close by or it could be a friend a uh, elder an uh, uh, elder man or a woman who is interested in you if you don't want to go to a family member but if you have in your family somebody you can trust a father your father or your mother or your elder brother or elder sister take her help she or he will help you to get out of this some forms of uh, self help to these are as i said first become aware that you are addicted and uh, widen your circle of friends as i told you in the beginning this uh, sense of de-socializing uh, you know always being with your with your uh, gadgets is something which kind of disconnects us from the human persons and this disconnection from human persons automatically creates a void a psychological void between us and the others so the we are we stop remaining uh, normally thinking normally being we need to connect more to human persons in order to let uh, to let freely our emotions flow even if the emotions are uh, could be of anger sometimes but emotions flowing towards uh, to people and from people help the human system to uh, 
to work normally and to let the person out of something we call loneliness and depression. So widen your circle of friends and modify your internet use step by step. First of all, remove all unnecessary apps, all those unnecessary videos which are in your smartphone or on your desktop. Uh, clear it. Decide today with the help of the Lord that you are going to take this step. And remember, the Lord is with you. The Lord is going to come there and stand by you, sit with you day in and day out to get you out of this, in the, in, uh, this addiction. So, uh, two things down now. Uh, tell somebody and cut short your internet use. Third, depend on, uh, know that the Lord is with you. Okay, begin to employ positive affirmations to yourself. Stop telling yourself that you need other people's likes and you need to look at particular things in the smartphone in order to feel happy. Find other ways of making yourself happy, like getting into some talents, uh, into using some talents, getting into some hobbies, uh, learning a new language, learning a new instrument to play like the guitar or something even cheaper or uh, go and play uh, a game in the playground with the other boys or the girls or play play some other things with some other girls like there are, there are various indoor games which you all can which you which you can find exercise is another thing which helps you de-stress very often for uh, uh, internet internet addiction is one form of relaxation uh, it is uh, going to the internet is for uh, entertainment is for relaxing and uh, going to pornography is sometimes for de-stressing. Friends, find other ways of de-stressing like exercise, like going to the gym and lift weights, it helps. Coming to the Lord, besides what I already told you was developing your friendly interactions, remember that the Lord is in, different, is in, in the human being. Every human person comes there and is in front of you just as Jesus is in front of you. So when you interact with human persons, you are actually allowing the Lord to interact with you. So uh, keep this important point to develop more relationships. Tenderness and rendering help or relating to children and innocence in older persons are of great help because when you begin to be tender when you begin to calm down to relate in a tender manner automatically your heart is maneuvering when your heart is maneuvering then you're already getting de-stressed the best form of de-stressing is to maneuver your heart in the positive way when you begin to love a little more with your heart, you are automatically de-stressing yourself, you are helping yourself towards a de-addiction. Help your mother, help your father in some physical activity which he or she loves to do or has to do every day, maybe in the cooking or your father does something in the garden or repairing something or clearing some cupboards. These are physical activities which help you de-stress. Friends, you can go to the Lord directly by reading the word of God. Yes, the word of God reveals to us that we are loved by God. This reality is the basis of our Christian moral life. Once we are able to get deep into uh, the word of God, begin to read the word of God, the Holy Spirit will capture your heart and the Holy Spirit will help you get addicted to himself. The Holy Spirit is the one has great power to help you out of the addiction. The, the Trinity, God the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit are waiting for you to get de-addicted from your smartphone. Besides that, meditation on any word from the Bible for, or uh, what we call a mantra today like Lord have mercy on me, Son of God have mercy on me, Lord help me is something which will help you to get away from temptations as soon as you know there is a temptation for you to take your smartphone especially when you go to bed at night keep your smartphone a meter away from you put it off and keep only the alarm on or keep it on silent with only the alarm and keep it a meter away from you so that you don't get addicted to your smartphone at night and you sleep in time 
Friends, these are small ways which will help you. And remember to say your prayers before sleeping at night. Say your prayers before sleeping at night. That will definitely help you. Uh, the experience of affective love, I told you before, uh, tenderness is very important for uh, is very important in order to get out of this kind of addictions, especially porn addiction. So, uh, when you are loved, when you show love, you feel love of others, and this love helps build our person. Friends, uh, at the end of this talk, I hope you have got something uh, for your use of the smartphone. Snapchat, WhatsApp, Instagram are all good, but they are good in their own place and in their own time. Don't let them control you. You control them. You have the power. You have that in you to, con to take control of yourself and take control of your smartphone. Don't let the smartphone overpower you. You are greater than your smartphone. Remember that. You are young. You have the power. You can take over. In this prayer time, I will lead you, my friends, to a loving relationship with God. God loves me and God loves you. And this understanding, this confidence that God loves me and God loves you is going to be the basis of my de-addiction. Today I am going to decide to de-addict from the smartphone. And I know that I cannot do it alone. And I know that earthly powers are not enough to help me de-addict. And I know I don't even understand why I am addicted. I need God to help me cut that line to cut that rope which is tying me to this addiction close your eyes join your hands and focus let everything that is making you scatter be aside in your mind's eye Bring a flame of fire. Bring a flame of fire which is burning like the wick of a candle. And focus on that candle flame. Just focus. Breathe in and breathe out. And concentrate on your breathing in and breathing out and this exercise will help you focus the lamp is burning the wick is burning you are focusing your eyes are closed all those distractions all that tickling on your fingers to take hold of your, to, to change the channel, for example, if you're watching on the smartphone. Get rid of that. That is possible by focusing on that wick in your mind. This is meditation. This will lead you deep inside yourself. If you focus, breathe in and breathe out and focus on this, on the breathing in and breathing out and in your mind's eye, the burning flame. Nothing else, nothing else.
still still sit still you are now loving yourself yes because you are spending time with yourself alone because you love yourself and god is loving you in yourself when you give time to yourself in your breath and in your mind you are allowing god to love you god loves you as you are whatever color you are however tall or short you are the point is you are god's child and you are the loving child of your parents accept that love even if you feel that your parents get angry on you it doesn't mean they have stopped loving you they love you deeply and they care for you and that is why they give you your basic needs are you breathing in and breathing out Okay. Now slowly open your eyes. And this 5 minutes was an example for you to follow every day. Today 5 minutes, tomorrow 10 minutes. And friends, when you are able to sit for half an hour in this form of a meditation believe me you have conquered your addiction because you have power over your body you have power over yourself and that is the power god wants to give you god loves you he does If you dark or if you fair or if you fat or lean God loves you If you tall or if you short or somewhere in between God loves you He loves you when you're happy He loves you when you're sad He loves you when you're feeling good and even when you're bad No matter where you come from, no matter where you're going, God loves you. He loves me too. He loves you. Did you like that action song? Yes. God loves you. God loves me. God loves you. And so, this prayer has made you feel that you are loved by God. And this love will continue in your life. if you share it with others and this sharing of your love of your tenderness will help you de addict so friends let social media let instagram snapchat not be something negative in your life use it for the spread of the word of god use it for spreading good but don't let it overpower you let it empower you i should say
for being with us keep praying keep being good